Hey, what's up, you guys? They did a special since it's Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. They did a special on Asians called Who Am I? Asian Pacific American and Proud. The title I didn't care for. It was worded in a really weird way and they kept saying Asian Pacific American. A lot of people didn't know that the whole month of May is Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month which it's only been around for about two years. They said there are 15, over 15 million Asian Americans. I did read an article on the US Census for 2010, because they do it every 10 years, and they said from 2000 to 2010, Asians were the fastest growing population in the states. I had a couple problems with it. One being, well, it wasn't technically the show itself. It's more Nickelodeon's fault. I found out this show was gonna air the day that it aired. It was funny because when I was watching Nickelodeon, they didn't promote the show. They kept promoting rags and it was kind of disappointing that they didn't promote the Nick News special that they had on Nickelodeon. Because I remember when they did a special for 9-11, they promoted that one. In February, they did a Black History Month special and they promoted that one. And actually, I believe that one aired at 8 o'clock. However, the Asian Pacific American special that they aired on aired, they aired that one at 9 o'clock during Nick at Night. You know, I don't want to read too much into that, alright? But I will say that they did a horrible job promoting it. First up was an Indian girl. She's, she lives here in America, but her parents are from India. And she was talking about her experiences as growing up as Indian with the culture, her Indian culture, plus the American side. So she kind of lives two different lives because at school she's American, she hangs out with her American friends. She says she gets along with them great, but sometimes she has problems relating to them. And then uh, during the weekends for a couple hours she said that she goes to another school that teaches about her Indian culture and whatnot and she she likes it because she can relate to them more than her American friends and she talked about how they go to India every couple of years and stay for like a couple weeks to two months it was really interesting to hear what she had to say and she also mentioned the fact that a lot of people don't see Indians as Asian and then the next one was a Japanese girl she was born here in the States her grandparents moved here from Japan to make a better life for themselves and their family and it was just really interesting to hear what she had to say and then we had another person she was half Japanese half Chinese and he talked about same thing his life experiences and how it is growing up being Asian American and it, and he says that he that he doesn't feel like there's a lot of opportunities for Asians. And one of he likes playing basketball. That's what he said. And he said that that's one of the reasons why he wanted to join this basketball team that is specifically caters to Asians. I believe it was called the Ninjas. But. Yeah, I didn't know that they had their own little league that they do for, I think it was for middle schoolers and high schoolers. And then the other person that they had on there, he was Vietnamese. His parents moved here to America because of the war in Vietnam. And he talked about growing up as a Vietnamese American. And he said that he joined this line dance group. And, you know, it was really interesting to hear what he had to say as well. And they also had three celebrities on there to talk about their their culture and sort of what, how, what, what they face being in the media and being famous. They had uh, actor George Takei. And then we also had comedian Azia Azari, which I'm not really familiar with who they are name-wise, but I heard of them I know who they are I'm just not really familiar with with them and they also and they just talked about how how hard it is being in the media and being Asian you know George Takei he's probably one of the first Asians to you know be on TV because 
there wasn't very many opportunities in those days for Asians. And then as the Azari, he talked about just getting roles as the stereotypical Indian guy, you know, which he he stays away from. And we also had Ashley Agata, which I I know who she is. She was on. She played Lulu on True Jackson VP with Kiki Palmer. We don't we don't see a lot of Asians on TV. And she, and Ashley, she had a big part on True Jackson VP, and you know, and Kiki being the lead. So you don't see a lot of Asian and black characters, main characters on a show like that. I think Nickelodeon did that a couple years ago with Jess Jordan. I think the first ever lead Asian person to be on a TV series for Nickelodeon was The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu. I don't know if any of y'all remember it. I'm pretty old school, yeah. But, but, you know, I think she was the very first Asian lead character that they've ever had. And then something with Disney. Disney lacks Asian actors as well. One thing that Ashley did mention was Besides talking about growing up as Filipino, she did mention that people would come up to her and ask her if she's Filipino. And then when they find out that she's Filipino, they get really excited because, you know, that gives them a role model to look up to. And she said that she's happy to be someone that people look up to because when she was growing up, she didn't have anyone to look up to. They pointed out the stereotypes and sort of like how the media, they're not, they're just not giving Asians a chance. Even Ashley, she said that it was hard getting roles because there's certain roles that she's like, oh, I can play that role, but they're asking for a Caucasian to play it. And she said she thinks that's really unfair, which I have to agree with her. It is kind of unfair. We had one more person on the show I forgot to mention, and she talked about her her experiences being Lao American, and one thing I didn't agree with was one. She said that she was the first generation of of being Lao. When the one person who was a, who was Japanese was talking, she said she was the fourth generation, but the first generation to be born here in the states. So I kind of wish she would have said something like that, because but you know you, I understood what she meant though, but I just felt that she should have worded it a little better than saying first generation you know, being Lao American. When they eat dinner, they eat on the floor. They're very traditional. But she says when she goes to school, she feels more American. She said that it's really how difficult it is being Asian American. And she talked about her parents a little bit, how her parents want her to do really well in school. And she wants to, she wants to do fashion when she grows up. But she says that her parents want her to be like a lawyer or a doctor. And when she, when they get, when her parents get older, they want her to take care of them in old age. I thought the show was very educational. I thought it it was great, but I did have some issues with it. I felt I wish it would have been longer. You know, I know the programs are only 30 minutes long, but I felt that it deserved to be a little bit longer. Another thing I had an issue was they they showed a couple other people on the show. We had someone who was Filipino. We had someone who was from Bangladesh, and we had this one girl who was Indonesian. And I was kind of disappointed they weren't able to tell their stories, because I kind of wanted to, kind of wanted to hear them as well. So that was a little disappointing as well. But overall, I thought it was great. Hopefully, they continue to do these type of specials, educating people. I think I think it's a great thing.